Alright, today I just wanted to show you guys a workout video, something that we've been doing. So as you can see, Glenn here, he's got his fishing hat on because he decided that that was what was appropriate to wear for our first set. This is after our warm-ups, and what we're trying to do here is 190 pounds overhead press doing four sets of singles. Normally we would be cleaning this weight but due to deadlifting twice in a three day span, pretty heavy, we decided to give our backs a little bit of a break. We don't want to clean the weight. So we're starting from the rack. As you can see here, Glenn's doing these pretty easily. He's not really getting stuck. He's just pushing right through that movement. He's getting, tightening his core and then just pressing all the way up, making sure he's getting his head through. Now, if you watch me perform this lift, you're going to notice that I'm definitely pronouncing the sticking point right there above my head. And a lot of that has to do with a lack of speed generation and the fact that Glenn is actually just beating me right now in the overhead press. Him and I switch back and forth on who's winning, and right now Glenn is definitely beating me in the overhead press. After seeing this workout, I think he has 210, 215 in the bag here in the next couple of weeks. So here's the last set, and again, you can see me just still tr struggling through that, trying to press through. Next up in our workout, this is a reverse band seated Head. overhead Push. press. One. So you set the bands up so they're pulling Go. to up. relieve a lot of the weight at the bottom position. But as you press up, it gets harder and harder. What this does is it forces you to have to generate momentum, to lock it out, as well as really increases your lockout strength because you're having to struggle with all of the weight at the top of the position. You're getting a lot more lockout and tricep strength, which is really going to be beneficial for transitioning into strongman and even benching. For the strongman you're doing a push press so you're not really going to have to break it from the bottom. Now here when I go to do this you can see I'm just grinding through this. I have no idea what's going on. And after this set I discovered if you watch my legs and my core there I'm not stable. I'm playing around with my legs. I don't know what to do. Super light he says. Trying to readjust. There you go. No <laughs> So again, as you can see there, due to the lack of a solid base, I wasn't able to push through the weight. You know, this is again 190 pounds. And we're trying to do three sets of three reps. So I only got one rep on my first set. Here's Glenn on his second set. And he's just powering through that. And at the end of the set, he gives me some advice. And we discuss some foot positioning and things that will help me. I was having a lot of problems. I was trying to actually push my leg straight on the floor, which was making my hamstring cramp up. So the next set ends up going quite a bit better. But when I was getting under it, I used to... I mean, I was pushing, up. pushing my whole self. So you're getting into position now. You can see I kind of got my legs flared out a little bit. I'm not trying to drive the knees into the ground, making sure I'm getting that core nice and tight. And now I'm actually able to press and push through. So I actually do get the three reps in this set, and that's always a good feeling to get you what go. you were aiming for. This is something new that we've just added into training. We've been playing around with designing a program for the two of us that's a little bit more focused on our strengths and weaknesses and pre preparing for our upcoming strongman contest. Squeeze that core tight, come on. Go ahead and try and really hard to get that third rep in as this third set. Ah, ah. My arms are toasted. And it's just, it's just not going up for him. Here's me, third set. Again, you can you see go. I put those legs back in the same position. 
really getting tight. But I'm still going slower than that. I'm still not generating as much speed as I would like. Really having to push through at the lock out there. Which I guess is good for developing some maximal tricep strength. Now the goal is to do three sets of three, but because we both failed to get our desired reps, we decided to do a fourth set. Glenn only needed one, but he decided to go ahead and keep pushing. Two. There he is, for two. And here's my last set. I needed two for this, so I gave it everything I could just to eke out two. That's it. Now what we decided to do is do a very light, we're only using 105 pounds here. Two. Uh, three sets of three, ten reps, and what four, this is for is to work five, a little bit of an endurance, six, get some blood into the muscles seven, so that DOMS won't be as eight, bad, and we can increase nine, our work capacity a little ten, bit. This is something new that we're trying at the end of our main work for the big lift. We walk all over, push our rest of these. I think it's just because of the. Uh, don't walk over there. I'm telling him to just be ready when I switch. That's, you see, I almost fall over there. I was expecting a little bit of resistance from the bar and got none. And again, like I said, normally we clean the bar from the ground to shoulder position to press. And we're only pressing it out of the rack due to both of us having quite a bit of fatigue in the lower back today. So again, no rest other than the other person lifting in between. So this is set to just trying really hard to push for a good solid 30 total reps. And you can see Glenn here, he's just hammering that range of motion, that, that movement pattern that works for him. He's flexing his lats really hard, locking it in in the bottom position, getting his head out of the way, and then really quickly driving his head back through as he's pressing it up. Now you can see here as he continues to go, his reps are starting to get a lot slower, and that is due to fatigue. A little bit of lactic acid, he loses his balance there. Now something that I'm trying to do in these sets is really focus on pressing it as hard as I can, trying to get some speed generation there. This isn't really a speed workout, but since the weight is light enough, I figured that I might as well press as hard as I could just to try and get my brain to recruit some more muscle fibers as I'm actually lifting heavier weights, trying to get that faster and faster. And here we are in the last set here. Glenn's really regretting that we decided to do this after the workout. Right here, right now. At this point, both of our shoulders and even our triceps are just feeling the pump in them. They're just full of blood. Lactic acid's building up. And you can see his legs wiggling there. He ends up getting himself a hamstring cramp. So he needs to really work on making sure he's drinking enough water in the workout. Get back over there. That's something, guys, if you're having trouble with cramping in the workout, make sure you're drinking enough water. One of the things that I've taken to doing in the last couple of months is about 45 minutes to half an hour before I leave from work, which will end up being about an hour before I work out. I eat a banana just to get some extra potassium in there and make sure that I drink at least two 20 ounce before I go home. You can see there, you know, now all my speed is gone. It's just pushing through it. So after we were done with our overhead work, we want to make sure that we're balancing our overhead work with some sort of pulling motion in the same plane. So the overhead is a vertical We're movement. We up. chose to do pull downs today. And we want to really make sure that we're balancing 
pushing with pulling. And we just we always do a full body workout, so we do our balancing in the same workout. So here we just decide to do five sets. We ended up doing three Seven, sets with 150 five. pounds, and we did two sets with a few more reps Eight. with 100 pounds. Just trying to focus Nine. on again balancing the movements. So we end up having a lot more back work in this particular workout than our overhead. That's because the back plays such an important role in strongman. And as a good rule of thumb, even if you're powerlifting or lifting for general fitness, it's a good idea to do two pulling motions for every pressing motion that you do. So if you're going to be benching, you're going to want to do a bent over row or some sort of movement where you're actually pulling laterally against the ground and I only put one set in here because this gets pretty boring as I said we do this for five sets so that's a lot of film and what we did is we went into dips next this is another tricep type movement on. getting some Two. delt and Three, chest better. in there and Glenn's Four. just rocking these out Five. and for the two of us, we are heavier guys, so the fact that he can do so many of these is quite impressive. And I weigh about 25 pounds more than Glenn at the moment. Let's see if I can get any sand out for me. Okay. Just that one side. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think I can do one. I feel extra fat today. You can see that with him, that dip station started rocking a little bit. We don't have a perfectly even floor, but these are really hard for me. Struggling with balance. I'm a little too fat to be doing these. But him standing on that counter balances it pretty well. There goes Glenn, second set. <laughs> And the reason I wanted to show a couple of follow-up sets is to show some slingshot work in dips. One of the things I did not know about the slingshot was that it can be used for dips. So what the slingshot does is it assists you at the bottom of the movement. I've used them for push-ups and I've used them for bench pressing. And they're really amazing for working on your lockout strength or taking stress off of your shoulders. But uh, getting up on this dip station was quite a trick learning with the slingshot. But as you can see here, now I'm able to get down there. Um, actually, right there, my, my hand slipped and uh, took my wrist a little bit, so I had to go get some chalk. One of the things that happens when you work out is you and your partner start to sweat, and Glenn got his sweat all over the dip station, so my hand rotated out. But as you can see here, it allows me to get down there. It takes some of my body weight off and allows me to press, and I'm still getting a really good workout for my triceps, and although it's not working as hard now, my shoulders and chest can still feel this in the movement. Ah. Neither of us are perfect in the dip form, so I wouldn't look to us for how to perform a dip, but just to show you guys things that we're doing in our workout. And I'm leaving this in because it's hilarious. Watch Glenn try and get on this dip station with oh, the slingshot. He's never done it before. It's not easy to get up there with it. I'm tempted just to jump. Like, put your feet on there first and then put your hands up. Oh, okay. The one arm up. I'm gonna rotate. <laughs> you make fun of me. See, it's not easy. Alright, let's go. So, at this point in the workout, both of our triceps are just Two. done. Three. We don't have much left in us. Four. And we're just trying to get as many as we can. So yeah. Glenn decided to go ahead and try and use the slingshot. That was almost five. I liked it out. Trying to use some <laughs> leg propulsion there. No some sort. Right there. Didn't seem to help him out a whole lot. Apparently, the top of my triceps is done. Sure, the bottom is good, but. Yeah, it only helps a little bit on the bottom.
On the slingshot, it does pull your arms pretty hard, you know. It, it is almost like wearing uh, a bench shirt, not quite that extreme. But getting in position, I'm showing him right here how I do it. Just a quick hop on there once your arms are in position with one leg up. And even with the help of the slingshot, I'm just done. Three terrible reps. That's all. Uh, I totally done. Totally done. Uh, before we did these cable rows, we did some one armed pull downs. We did three sets of 10. I think we used 50 pounds on that, just doing some isolated one arm pull down rows. And so as you can see with Glenn on these pulley rows, we're not getting a whole lot of range of motion here. We're using 200 pounds on the pulley. He's making fun of my fat belly and short arms. I'm blaming that on why I do these better. But as you can see here, my elbows don't quite come back as far as I'd like to see that. And I am actually hitting my stomach on every single rep. So after watching this video, what I've decided to do is put the rope on there. The rope will allow both Glenn and I to pull around our gut and get get that as far back as we want. It's all about cutting that range of motion. And that is a tip if you're trying to increase the weight you can do on that. You can increase the size of your belly and you will emit the range of motion. Although most people don't want to make that sacrifice. So I just want to put this in here to show you how slow Glenn is at putting on wrist wraps. And what we're doing here is 105 pounds of dumbbell row. And uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting, if you watch me, I'm trying to maintain a, a fairly strict form. Trying to minimize any sort of leg drive. And Glenn, he just doesn't care. He, he's doing whatever it takes. But... If you notice, I'm trying to maintain a neutral spine there. Glenn does have a little bit of rounding. So if you are doing these, and the way we're doing it is putting our non-used arm on the knee for stability. I advise you to actually set up with your hand on a bench and possibly your opposite knee on a bench. That will help you maintain yourself upright. And as you can see as these go on, I'm starting to get a little bit of cheating in there, which isn't great. But I got 12 and I believe Glenn got 15 reps on that. So again, trying to get some extra movement in the back there. And this I put in just for fun. Both Glenn and I tweaked our biceps this weekend. Uh, different ways so we decided after all that back work hey let's uh let's see if we can do any curls okay and as you can see that did not go very well for Glenn no that's fine yeah no it's not yet it's my sore biceps from the I'm not a huge fan of curls, but trying to do the best I can at doing some strict curls and hating every second of it. <laughs> okay, ow! Funny how some of us, it's just the same because we've done the same things. So, we feel like the same spot. I still sit in a different spot than you. I can tell you that. Well, we the same lift.